Well, welcome back once again. And before we go any further, I want you to know right off the bat that the chances are we will not be firing up this television as I had thought. There are still a number of things that need to be done. And, you know, you've got to be very patient about this. If I fire this thing up too early, it could cause a problem, and all of our work will have been for nothing. Uh, the least of which is uh, we need to cover what I've done so far to this second uh, filter can. I cut it open with the Dremel tool and a cutting disc, tore out the guts, and I now have a hole drilled down through the center of it, okay? I drilled from the bottom up, not from the top down. Drill from the bottom up this way. The reason being, if you drill from the top down, which I have done in the past, sometimes you run into things you don't want to run into with the drill bit. <laughs> so, you know, you're drilling down like this, straight down, you're kind of drilling, uh, you know, sort of blind. And even if you tip the chassis up on the side, you're not, it's not guaranteed that you're not drilling into something. So it's best to go ahead and drill from the bottom up. That way, no matter where the drill comes up here, no matter where the bit comes through, it's not going to hit anything, okay, because there's nothing there to hit, nothing but air. All right, what I've done is I got, got rid of the guts and cleaned out the can just like I did with the other one. And I kind of flattened out the top a little bit, make it kind of flat. It, it gets, you know, in the process of using your Dremel wheel, it gets a little jagged, a little bumpy in places. You just can't get it perfectly. And then I went ahead and flattened out, you know, a little bit along the edge of the can here. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Then I put a piece of cardboard down in there, marked it cut it to the right size. It took a little bit of time to do that. And then this is the way that thing's going to sit down in there, just like that, with some tape around it. Now what goes on the inside, let me show you what that is over here. I put together the four capacitors that needs to go inside that can. And of course the way they're going to go in will be the negative side toward the top. And sticking out the bottom will be the leads that have to go through the hole that I drilled right here and come out the bottom of the chassis. Now the way to hook the uh, the uh, ground lead is, you know, I've always found it best to just go right up through the center. Let me see if I can get a little zoom in here. Get this in a little spot here, get a little zoom in for you. Yeah, there we go, a little focus, a little focus please. All right, there we go. I took the black ground lead and ran it up through the hole in the center of the capacitors. When you put the capacitors together like this, two or three, you're always going to have a hole. And that space is always wide enough to put a 22 gauge wire up through. I've always taken advantage of that. Alright, now what that's going to be is our ground wire, of course. And I'm going to run the ground wire all the way up until it comes out the top and it's in the center of the rest of the ground wires right here. I can get that thing to stay put. Come on. There we go. Okay, they're all going to be together here, bundled together. I'm going to take the, uh, the ground wire and I'm going to coil it around the rest of them. Then we're going to solder it together and cut off the length down to where the coil is. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We want a nice neat job, but it doesn't have to be you know, you don't have to go crazy on it. You just bring your ground wires or your negative side wires from the electrolytic capacitors together. Wrap your wire around it a couple of turns, the ground wire, this black insulated wire right here. Solder it together and clip them off. Let's solder them together. I'll show you what I'm talking about first. All right, once again, you can see here, I'm doing a real extreme close-up. The coil method, again, of soldering wires together comes in handy. All I did was take that tinned wire, which was the black ground wire, I stripped back the insulation, you know, about an inch and a half, tinned it, and then just wrapped it around and around and around all the rest of these. And I'm going to solder it up. It has been soldered, and now we'll just go ahead and cut off those extra lengths right there, like so. Hopefully I can cut through them. Yeah, get a little bigger bite here. It might help. All right, there we go. That's how we connect all of the negatives of the four capacitors together with a down to the center ground. That's just one way of doing it. Just one way of doing it, guys. I could have just twisted them all together and soldered them. I thought that might have looked a little tacky, but 
you know, inside the can. Who's going to see it anyway, right? <laughs> okay, what's next? The next thing I have to do is attach four different colored wires to these uh, to the positive side of these uh, electrolytics. Uh, the large one is a uh, 100 microfarad, 250 volt. These two here are 22 microfarads at 50 at uh, 150 volt or 250 volts. And then a little tiny one down in there. You can't hardly see it. Where is that little booger? Right there by my thumb. There it is. Just barely sticking out. That little one down there is uh, it's 100 uh, microfarads again. But it was only supposed to be 25 volt, but this one's a 50 volt. So let's get four different colors on there. I've already written down the colors I will be using for each of them. The colors of the wires I decided on are red, blue, yellow, and green. Now the red one I decided to use for you know for the highest value capacitor, the 100 microfarad at 250 volts, of course. And then I went with the blue and the yellow for the two, uh, the, you know, the schematic calls for 20 microfarad, but I'm using 22s. And then the green will be used on the little dinky one, the uh, 100 microfarad at 25 volts, but I have the 50 volt, as I said. Now what I'm going to do, I've already uh, separated these things. I'm going to go ahead and remove the insulation on each one of them that I've already split apart. I'm going to tin them. I'm going to turn them into little tiny coils. And then we're going to slide them over individually on each of the uh, leads coming out of the positive ends of the caps. And then we're going to go ahead and solder each one up and heat shrink each one when we're done. I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink over each one. Give it a little added strength. Keep it, you know, maybe the corrosion down later on at a point in time. I don't know. Might not do anything, but I want to do it. Well, there's our first coil soldered uh, the red wire to our largest capacitor, which is the uh, color I selected for that. Some of you may be wondering, well, why did I select red, blue, yellow, and green as my wire colors? Well, it's because in the realm of wire color selection, I am all powerful. Anyway, this here, I might cut the wire a little bit short right about in here instead of nipping it up here after I solder. I think what I'm going to do since these will be inside the can, I don't want to take any chances of them coming loose. I may cut about an eighth of a wire. I may cut it a little bit long, about an eighth of an inch, and then hook it around and solder it that way. That'll give me added strength, just in case. I, I don't think it'll be a problem, but you know, you never know. Somebody could yank on these wires at some point in the future and pull it loose and not even know it. So we'll go ahead and maybe bend a little hook around and then solder it up. There's our little hook. I'm going to slide this down into the hook, like so. Just slide it on down, just like so. And we'll solder it up just like that. All the wires are soldered on, and now I'll slip up uh, four pieces of heat shrink on each one, just like I did right here. And then I'll shrink them down. That'll give them added strength. It's going to be real nice when we get her done. Okay, I think that's got it. That has got it. Look at that. It looks nice and neat, huh? Before it's over, I'll probably put one more heat shrink, piece of heat shrink, up to about halfway. One big heat shrink, you know, to, to hold them all together like that. And that's the way they'll sit inside this can. Let me see here. They will sit in here like so. They will stick out the bottom. The wires will, and they'll go down through the hole that I drilled in the bottom of the can that's still sitting on the chassis. But we do have a problem. I just discovered I didn't drill the hole big enough. The, I can get four of the wires down through, but not the fifth one unless I really, really force it. And of course, we don't want to do that. But they have been cut off all at the same length. So the next time you see it, it'll uh, have a little piece of heat shrink around here, and the hole will be drilled big enough uh, in order for the entire mechanism to, to sit down in. Then we'll go ahead and tape the can shut with more chrome tape. Incidentally, you may want to know why I, uh, why I use this chrome exhaust, because I had some left over, that's all. I mean, what the heck? Just use it to tape it together. It's very strong stuff. You know, it'll work great. Instead of putting the heat shrink that I had originally uh, 
thought about doing, I went ahead and took just a plain old wire tie and put that around there. And my reasoning is that when I push this thing down into the can, it'll sit on that wire tie. Now that I've made the hole large enough for all the wires to go through, it'll just basically sit on there just like that. Give me a little platform for it to sit. Now all I have to do is take the old can, slip over the top, and push it all the way down in. But not before we do one more thing, kind of tradition with me. What we have here is a dollar bill, and inside the dollar bill is a note. And we are going to create our standard time capsule in this little can. All the way down in there. Everybody always asks me, well, what does it say on the note? I never tell anybody. <laughs> so don't ask. You're not going to know. Anyway, and then this thing here will slip down over the top there, like so. Let me see if I can get it to work. And then this goes down. Now, I made a couple of uh, blue lines here with my uh, marker to kind of figure out where I wanted to position it after it lined up. And there it is. There's the second one. There it is. All right, she's sitting up nice and straight. Now all I have to do is put my tape around there and seal it together and it'll be good to go. Now we need to go underneath and um, we're gonna wrap this uh, video up, not by soldering the wires up, but we're gonna wrap this video up uh, another way. We're gonna wrap this thing up by showing you which wires uh, go to which terminals on the bottom of the electrolytic can and how to figure it out. How do you figure out which one the red one goes to, the blue one, or the green one? You know, we know where the black goes. That's ground. That's piece of cake. Well, you know, that already, you know, we're way ahead of the game. 20%'s been done. <laughs> okay, so how do you do that? Well, you have to go to your schematic and you have to trace them out. Well, you know, that's always the weakest part for a lot of the young folks and even some of the older guys and even some of the folks have been at it for years. They still find it very difficult to trace wiring and it's really really simple okay now we know that the red wire is connected to the 100 microfarad 250 volt the blue is connected to a 20 and 250 the yellow is connected to a 20 and 250 and the green is connected to a 100 microfarad but it's only a 25 volt which is 250 up here 25 down here we want we don't want to get those two mixed up that would kind of go bang with 250 volts hitting it or more than 25 or in this case 50 volts because that's the size of cap I used. Now here's our, our uh, the bottom of our uh, electrolytic can and with its connections and we need to figure out which one goes here. Now this is the front of the radio. This is where the tuning knobs are, you know, volume control and whatnot. So let me show you how that's done. Well, the first thing you have to do is find your electrolytic capacitors. Those four electrolytic capacitors, you have to find them on the schematic, you know, and, and duh, you know, of course. And I always make it a point to highlight the electrolytics, all electrolytics, I highlight them in yellow. That's always the case, no matter what I'm working on. So I've got one there. Let me see, what was this one? This one here is C2A. Now, C2A comes off the power supply. And over here we've got, let me see, what do we got here? We've got C2B, which comes off of this tube right here. It's a 6AS5, okay? Now you can just, you can barely read these things. They're so small that that's one reason I like to, I like to mark them. This is C2, and that's the letter B. So I just write them bigger so I can see them, okay? I'm sort of the John Hancock of schematics, okay? Now down here we have C2C and C2D. Now both of these fortunate, now this is very fortunate, you know, because the positive of C2C and the positive of C2D both go up to the same tube. Is that cool? This one here uh, goes to pin 4 and this one here connects up and goes to pin 8. It doesn't get any easier than that. Oh man alive. Let me see, what size is this capacitor? This is a 20 microfarad. Ooh, piece of cake there. And this one over here is a 100 microfarad, which is C2D. Now, now we get into the meat and potatoes. Which 100 microfarad is that? Is that the small voltage value one, or is that the high voltage? C2D. Let's find out. Let's go to the parts list and find out. 
Well, here's our parts list, and under the capacitors, it says capacitors. We go down and we find C2A, B, C, and D. The reason these check marks are here, whenever I find them on the schematics and I highlight them in yellow, I'll check them off in the parts list to make sure I found them all. These are the, I'm talking about the electrolytics now. Now, we just found C2D. This is C2D, and it was 100 microfarads. The voltage value is 25. Look at there. That's the small one. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. So what I'm going to do is C2D. I'm going to, where is it? Where am I in the camera? Come here. There we go. Okay. I am going to write down here 25 volts. Now, does this get any easier? Does this get any easier? Tell you what, let's start with C2A. Now, according to C2A, it is uh, 250 volts on our parts list, so I went ahead and marked it 250 volts right there. Now, and we already know it's in, it winds up in the power supply, which is what this is right here. Now, let's take a look and see where the positive is connected to. The positive of C2A goes up and connects to a 1 watt, 470 ohm resistor. 1 watt, 470 ohms. Let's find out what color code that would be. There is a website out there, and it's called Sam's uh, Tech Lib, or Sam's Tech Library. But it's samstechlib.com, okay? And when you get there, you'll find this color-coded deal. I've been using this for years. This is the coolest thing. Now, what we're looking for is uh, 470 ohms. And this, you know, up here, it becomes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's go with the yellow. Let's click. You know, the first arrow right here is already on a brown, but we want yellow. There it is. That's the 4, okay? Now, the 7 would be... 4 would be 5, 6, 7, which would be the next line, would be violet, and then that's 4.70. Now the next line, we have 470, which would be 1, 0, which would be the brown. We want 1, 0. That's the last number that we want. We click that, and there we go. 470 ohms. It'll be a yellow, violet, and brown. Now you don't have to, if all you have is the color of the bands. You can just go with the bands and it'll tell you what the value is here. Just click whatever color you have in the first, second, and third spot. Now, of course, this is silver. The last band is silver, which means it's got a 10% tolerance. If that last band were gold, it would be, I believe it's 5% tolerance. Let's find out. This is silver. Let's go ahead and click gold down here. Yeah, 5% tolerance, okay? But ours is silver, so, you know, we'll go back up here. Click silver again. There we go. 470. I'm looking for a resistor that's yellow, violet, and brown. Let's see if we can find that. And back at the, uh, you know, the bottom of the electrolytic can, guess what we have? <clears throat> we have a yellow, a violet, and a brown resistor that's one watt, and it connects right there. And, you know, that would be C2A. C2A, just like on the schematic. So what is C2A? C2A is the 100 microfarad, 250 volt. If I can get it over here and get it to focus a little bit. And it would be the red wire. All right. So we now know that it is the top left right there. And now, of course, you know, now look, you have to make sure that none of this stuff has been tampered with. You know, you have to trace it out and make sure that this stuff is original. If it's original, you're okay. If it's been messed with, tampered with, then it's a whole different story. You're going to have to really, really trace it out. Fortunately, none of these have been tampered with. So we now know that that is C2A. So guess what? C2A is red. So we're just going to mark that as red. All right, we only have three more wires to go. All right, let's find old C2B. Now, C2B... We're very fortunate in that the wire comes off the positive of the electrolytic, which is a 20 microfarad, and it comes up and it goes straight into pin 6 of the 6AS5. So what we need to do is find the 6AS5, find pin 6, 
and see if there's anything that leads all the way back to the positive of one of those three remaining terminals. Let's do that. There is the 6AS5. Well, let's find pin 6. Here's the separation, you know, and we go clockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's pin 6. Let's see if there's anything coming off of it. There's a red wire. Is that the red wire? Yes, it's moving the pin. All right, let's follow this red wire back. See if it goes anywhere back in here. And wiggle. See, all I'm doing now is I'm just barely pulling on it. Don't be yanking on it like a, like a crazy person. And we're, oh, look at there. That wire goes all the way back and connects onto the right hand bottom terminal of our electrolytic. Right there, that's the red wire coming up right there. Piece of cake. Let's go back to our little, uh, where's our little yellow thing? What'd you guys do with it? It was here a second ago. Here it is. Okay. All right. We now know that it hooks on right here. And it is a, what did I say it was? You, know, you constantly got to go back and forth. Now, it is a 20 microfarad. And we know that the 20 microfarads are both 250. So we can hook it with either a blue or a yellow. We'll just hook it with a blue. I like blue, sure. We'll go blue. And that takes care of terminal number two. All we got left now is the yellow and green. Let's find out which one uh, will be yellow and which one will be green. All right, hang with me, hang with me. We are almost done. All we have to do is determine which is which right here and where they go on, that, on those terminals. Here's the other 20 microfarads. See it right there? It's also 250 volts, and it is C2C, and it runs up the positive side of the capacitor, runs up and connects to pin 4 of the 6W6GT tube. Pin 4. Well, that ought to be easy. We find pin 4. If we got anything that runs back to the positive here, that's it. Piece of cake. All right, here's your 6W6GT uh, right down in here. Let's find pin four. Right here is the key, right between the, right here, the key and the uh, socket. And of course, when you have a socket like this, you go from the key. So that's one, two, clockwise, three, four, to a red wire. Let's see where that wire goes. Up, 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 up. Get this lamp out of the way so we can see something here. Up, 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 look where it runs. All it comes up here, runs on up, and it connects to the top right, the top right of that uh, electrolytic can. So that's our other 200, our other uh, 20 rather. So uh, we have uh, blue and yellow. We use the blue. We use this yellow, yellow. Okay, that just leaves us with the green, which should be a 100 microfarad. 25 volt, but you know I could easily just mark that as being green and solder it up and go with it But you know you don't want to do that. You know what we're doing here is a restoration We take our time. We make sure everything is righteous to the best of our ability. Okay If I've done everything else correctly this last terminal terminal 8 on this uh, tube this 6w6 GT should trace back to this last terminal. Let's find out. All right, we come off of the uh, terminal with a very short wire, it looks like, and it goes over to here on a terminal strip. And now uh, most people say, what the heck is going on? It's going to a capacitor. Don't worry about that. Stay on target here. We're looking for something heading back toward the, cap you know, the electrolytics. There it is right there. There's a wire going in our direction. Where's that one? Let's see where that one goes. Yeah, it's coming up in our direction. Further up, further up. It comes up, comes up, comes up. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It is right above this capacitor right here. There it is right there. Let me pull that wire just to show you. Get a hold of that thing. See it right there? Right, uh, connected to where that capacitor is connected. That is the lower left-hand terminal of the electrolytic can. 
just the one we want right here. So that, my friends, is going to be green. There you have it. Red, yellow, green, blue. I mean, it can't get any easier. It just cannot get any easier. Now, there is one thing I want to tell you about old Brendan. You know, he said, hey, John, uh, you don't want to be taking that old ground wire that you got there on that other can you restuffed. You don't want to be hooking that thing down there to this uh, terminal right here that's riveted to the chassis, you know, you know, to get your ground. And it's a ground, but, you know, you don't want to be doing that, you know. <laughs> the reason being is this, ter this terminal strip is, uh, the, yeah, it's grounded. It's riveted to the chassis, okay? Fact. I don't care where you look, no matter what anyone says, the best ground on a chassis is a soldered ground. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about right there. See that right there? The end of that capac that uh, resistor has to be is soldered to the chassis. It has a ground. That's a perfect ground. You can't get a better ground than soldering it to the chassis, okay? Let's see if we can find another one. Here's another one that's been soldered to the chassis right there. Your best grounds are those soldered to the chassis. The ones that are uh, rivets or screws, nuts, bolts, and lock washers, star washers, things like that. They, you know, they get corrosion between them after a period of time. And you lose the, you know, the ground. That's just the way it is. But with a solder, it's a whole lot different. Unless, you know, the, the radio's been sitting in salt water somewhere. <laughs> Even then, it still holds a pretty good ground. Anyway, that should, uh, I think, about complete it for now. Next time, we'll remove this. And we will remove this. And I should have all of these wires soldered where they're supposed to go and all the yellow caps in by that time. And uh, once we get this out and this out, we're going to clean real good here. We're going to ohm out a couple of coils here. And we're going to clean the other side of this. I want to talk to you about this a little bit. And that's about it. Maybe one other thing. It depends on how my conversation goes with my electronics mentor, Brendan. I have a question to ask him. So anyway, until next time. Sorry this video was so long. Uh, but it, it was a lot of good information that some of you need to know. Not only following uh, schematics, but don't let this stuff intimidate you. It's just nothing but wires and solder points, okay? Until next time, this is John.